everyone, this is Tema Liu and welcome to online video course Pianoval. So I decided to finally show you how Pianoval system works with some uh, slow music like Naxxiomas by Chopin. And I think this is such a beautiful music and if you can reach um, this delicate sensation in your fingertips that can let you play with such a gentle sound and if you can express yourself through intonation and absolutely incredible beautiful musical speech and phrasing here then you will feel absolutely free while playing this music so let's go ahead and i will show you how you can do this <laughs> and one more time don't forget to download my training book from my website artofpianotechnique.com because this is where you can actually learn every music even of expression that I'm gonna talk about in this video and watch lessons of my video course that show how to work with that book. Alright, let's get it started. What we do first? As usual, we need to develop correct sensations in our fingertips to control every single note, to control every single finger when we play and we do this through our imagination. So let's imagine right hand in beautiful, flowing, sounding in the huge space, absolutely perfect vocal voice. You can choose any singer that you love. I absolutely love Anna Nitrievka. Her voice is such smooth and beautiful and at the same time three-dimensional full. So I think when I imagine something here, I imagine something like this. Again, I really suggest you do not imagine um, sound like flat, you know, like you literally standing beside the singer. Give the sound space that is very important for your sensation and for your intonation that we're gonna uh, use later that will make your sound be more free and as usually we not just imagine every note we imagine it with correct movements that follows the melodic pattern here and between notes in this interval we imagine sound uh, on glissando so if i imagine this sound i would imagine this way is very important for correct tone production and make sure that even all these little ornamentations like thrills and um, turns over here you move your sound right and left that will let you play and you will be able to sing every single note in this, in even in this little thrill. <laughs> and of course, when we play, our wrist express our imagination. So our wrist gonna follow the melodic pattern, follow sound movement. So when we play the right hand, it would move this way. while playing bliss intonation it would be uncomfortable to play it so. and with our left hand uh, we're gonna use string of, of instruments cellos will be uh, for our bass and violas these chords in the middle. Again, what we can struggle with over here is imagining every single note in the chord because if we imagine just one note, 
better and the second one and the rest is just like super cloudy and how we can control every finger while we're playing so only our uh, ear our inner ear can let us control fingers before they actually play the notes otherwise you would play and one note wouldn't sound and you would realize it already after you play the notes so it's not gonna work that way again um, how we start imagining we imagine first notes sequentially and then reduce time between them unless uh, both notes sound the same simultaneously the same with three notes everything that I just show you you do in your head um, this is about polyphonic ear guys so if you already developed it before that's not gonna be a problem for you even over here five notes together But that will give me guarantee that I gonna that every sound is gonna play, every sound, every note is gonna sound under my fingers. And the movement we make again, it's um, the pattern of the accompaniment uh, show us um, how we should imagine sound. The bass to the left, these two chords to the right. So this is the button left, right, right. Now, of course, to feel absolutely free and to be able to concentrate on the um, inner musical world, you know, and express freely yourself through music, we shouldn't be distracted by anything, especially with our left hand, which is quite busy over here. So. In this case, we're going to use our elbow to make every movement not a bit jerky, but absolutely smoothly and naturally. So we're talking about position change right now. And this is how we make it. Wrist to the left, elbow to the right. Wrist to the right, elbow to the left. Wrist to the left, elbow to the right. Sometimes there are places where we're going to change position even within these two, uh, two intervals, two chords. For example, here. For me, I cannot reach that. <laughs> and so here, I move my elbow to the right again. So basically, wrist to the left, elbow to the right, wrist to the right, elbow to the right to the right and go to the left and there are a couple of places just like that even here we get the same right right left this is one position so you move on on the first note and last note i know when you do it very slow tempo it's it looks quite like too much, but trust me, when you play it, and you could probably already notice from my playing, you cannot even say what I'm doing. <laughs> but the muscles inside my hand, they are working absolutely in the right way, and that let me play very smoothly my left hand. Um, if we're gonna, we also, you know, need to find some position change in our right hand. Uh, I cannot really show you guys here every single movement that I'm making with my elbow because the pattern is always different. Um, but you know, at the same time, the pattern always repeats itself. Okay, I'm gonna take time and show you. This is my position. Now 
here, elbow to the right, elbow to the left, right, left. to remember which fingers I'm playing here. <laughs> Left, right. Okay, so if I'm using, if you're following these fingers, then follow this pattern. Right, left, 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 right. All right, the same, 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 the same. Okay. I'm gonna imagine the right hand in vocal voice with movements with glissando between notes. I'm gonna imagine left hand in string group of instruments, imagine left hand in cellos, this one in violas. Alright, so this is how it looks like. I'm not playing with any intonation, I'm not using any weight, any phrasing, nothing over here. Just um, simply movements and simply my um, imagination. play with intonation and weight. Again, before we start playing with intonation, we need to really um, 
understand for themselves how we're gonna intonate uh, all these little, small, <laughs> very um, delicate articulations that are written over here. Um, I do all these staccato things, including non legata, like over here. I think it's very nice if you intonate. just like oh. so I really follow this a little um, uh, non legata or soft staccato intonation I do not make uh, accents like in the bar number six you know here the first time I don't know it's written in my edition it's written here accents but if I intonated those accents like this way Oh, 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 oh. It's a little bit out of the character of this music. <laughs> so I suggest that Chopin wrote it for, or whoever wrote it, um, to um, emphasize the freedom, to emphasize these little slurs over here. So I think if we're gonna intonate it with musical speech and phrasing. exactly what Chopin wanted here by showing these accents. Um, yeah, I basically actually ignore every these accents except Spartanda over here. Again, I make this Spartanda very delicate. It's not like oh, oh, not like a fighting one like in revolution uh, etude, but um, more a little bit like a little bit softer <laughs> it's very nice I do make accents in the very end I think it's it I think it's good to make it because it's within the character um, more like agitato over here so yeah I think you can go ahead and make it uh, the left hand I absolutely love this again not super short but kind of more like soft staccato in the bass already finish it and play the whole song exactly this little intonation this little articulation makes this beautiful aura this beautiful atmosphere of this etude basically when I play it I really feel like you know I'm more like playing Baccarol or something like this I'm like in the boat um, like moving side to side don't do this then your accompaniment is going to sound quite dull you know you will be lack of something really really precious over here if you just intonate nothing interesting but if you intonate something like that again guys uh, how to intonate correctly every articulation not just imitate how I sing but do yourself make yourself correctly uh, it's all explained in my video called um, lesson whatever <laughs> articulation cannot remember the number of that lesson 
so watch that lesson to be able to make every articulation correctly through intonation not just simply you know like staccato then I should play it staccato you know shorter it's uh, it's not gonna work this way every articulation is variant of intonation and if you don't make articulation through intonation you simply don't change the character of music you simply you know make yourself um, even more uncomfortable playing it so every articulation should be 100% um, connected and expressed through intonation all right so now i'm going to play it with sound imagination with correct movements like we did in previous stage but i'm going to express everything through intonation and i'm going to go ahead and gather weight before playing so i'm going to play it with weight and you can see even comparably with my previous um, example when i show you <laughs> i don't know how to say in english um, you can see that now I'm playing absolutely differently, <laughs> even without pedals, so it sounds like this. and weight and articulations. On the next stage we're gonna go to the absolutely marvelous world of harmonies. <laughs> Just go ahead and take every chord, um, every harmony with pedal and just listen to this beautiful world of E flat major. For me E flat major uh, it's something, it's not like a real life. <laughs> That's why I play this Naxxion so gentle. Um, it's like from another world for me. Uh, every color is very gentle. So, okay, let's go ahead and listen. harmonies because our goal to really catch the emotional color of every harmony to feel which chord which harmony is more tensed and darker maybe colder which harmony is more released and warmer and calmer um, even if you can catch the actual color of the harmony would be so nice. Then later we could imagine our sounds, our timbers in the color of, in emotional color of every harmony and that will change sensation our fingertips and uh, change our intonation. Um, I've been talking about this the whole lesson so I don't want to really repeat myself again here. So let's go. Just like um, oh, how to say it in English. 
Um, it's like the favorite harmony of Chopin that you can hear through all his concerts. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see, following these harmonies, you can see this all nocturne is just variation. So the harmony now is just like a, um, a scheme and you just like um, plan and he just changed some melody, but the harmony is gonna stay the same. Until we got to the very last one. I absolutely love this place, it's like absolute peace for me. Imagining uh, every note in timbre, uh, harmony, dynamics, and voicing with movement. 
uh, about the name is here guys you see uh, there are some like piano and forte I do not really imagine forte honestly I think this forte again more about emphasizing more about uh, emphasize, I mean more about emphasizing some sections and here we're talking about again phrasing so when we're gonna do when we're gonna make phrasing our breath our our how to say our intonation will naturally make this forte section be more bold, you know, bigger. Um, so I basically do not really imagine anything forte until I get to the last page where, well, there is partissimo, basically Chopin really meant forte over here. So that's why. I'm doing uh, some kind of crescendo, you know, from start from here. I basically imagine everything forte uh, till here. Now this one, of course, piano, gradual crescendo, diminuendo. This one I do, and um, very, very soft at the very, very end because there's like, oh my God, three piano, P pianissimo, super pianissimo. And in uh, what, if we talk about voicing, of course, right here I'm Im generally imagining uh, closer and the rest left hand on the background. But again, even within the left hand, we're gonna we get we're gonna find the notes that we're gonna uh, imagine closer. I do imagine bass. I do voice bass and. I'm also voicing the top notes, the top parts in every chord and interval. So, so basically like this. And in this case, the chord would would sound more, you know, more even. Because if we imagine every note on the same level, if we, even when we play in piano, compare this to this, that sounds better, right, than this. So even within the left hand, I'm trying to find the melody <laughs> that I can actually bring up. Uh, so basically it goes like this, right hand super close and then left hand with her own voicing part a little bit like less closer and then the rest notes just on the background. Yeah. So I'm gonna show you how I'm playing it with sound imagination, with timbre, with harmony, imagining it soft. But at the same time, imagine some parts closer to me. And that will give you this delicate sound, this delicate sensation in your fingertips. through our head. If we are able to imagine all this texture correctly, then we're able to control our fingers before they actually play the notes. So my hand, my left hand, even before I play the chord, every muscle already know, every muscle already knows, already feels how it's gonna exert to which point to make the chord be absolutely perfect. If you again don't do this, 
through intonation, through sound imagination, and when you play, then everything gonna be loud and not together, something like this, which is also not good. <laughs> And it's usually when we imagine uh, on this stage, when we imagine every note in the texture of deep water, every our movement gonna go deeper to the piano. That means we're gonna, um, how to say, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna move our wrist deeper, you know. Um, so this is where all the up and down movements of the wrist start to appear starting from this stage so um, I'm imagining every note in the texture of water of deep deep ocean again still I remain the same movement and still I remain the same glissando between notes and I'm doing this first without any harmony and dynamics and voicing and then with everything so I'm gonna skip that stage and just play with sound texture, harmony, dynamics, voicing, and I'm gonna use pedal from now. From uh, from now, and let's see how it goes right now. actually the difference I definitely can feel the difference and now musical speech is so much important in the nocturnes because it's all about singing and nocturnes is, is night song and uh, every single interval here means so much every single interval changes the um, the melody changes the little bit the character of music so let's go ahead and see how this music goes on by which interval so first opening six up this is beautiful six to down to up to down Okay, for those of you who probably don't know what I'm doing right now, uh, every interval has its meaning. Three and six means beauty and uh, harmony and love. Two and seven means little bit tension and asking and request. Uh, four means uh, very energetic. F fifth means um, more meditating, more kind of like... Uh, more meditation, you know, more calmer. And if we meet sometimes in the augmented force, a diminished field, that means some kind of mystery going on. Uh, and it's again, it's not just enough to understand these intervals. We have to master this technique to really express the meaning of each interval through intonation. We can only feel through intonation. So basically, again, I'm not going to say six or second, I'm just say six up or two up, two down, and you would understand. So six up, two up, two down, two, four, six, five. Now I forgot to say octave is an open statement. Two, 
because this is still three. That's why it's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely love this next year, you can tell. <laughs> and two down, two down. Six down. Two up, two up. So it really changes intonation. Um, Maybe I'm gonna, even when I sing it, okay, if I show you singing without musical speech, it's gonna look like this. the same and kind of boring so musical speech this is what brings the natural breath this is what brings this um, beauty to the melody so let's check with musical speech now I'm singing meaning to your to your singing right <laughs> something like this so I'm gonna play now uh, with musical speech more important even with your left hand you got to intonate intervals with musical speech so here octave and three i'm going by the top voice i'm going by the by the part that i'm voicing so three up three down two something augmented or diminished <laughs> every single turn you have to intonate with musical speech and then together with both hands so this that was kind of challenging for me uh, and for you probably too, but oh well, even if you can manage to make a right hand, that should be already enough to bring so much meaning and um, life, real life to your playing. So I'm gonna play with musical speech now. without phrasing yet. So let's go ahead and play it now uh, take a look at the phrasing. So as usually we're gonna find out the limits of motifs, the limits of phrases and limits of sentences. Um, this and find the main uh, sections in them. So this is how I believe um, the structural phrasing is going on here. So the first motif lasts, um, so basically every motif lasts around one bar and we actually use it exactly one bar because we start like from a beat. So this is one motif. Alright, this is the second motif. And again. four motifs over here and uh, um, so this is I don't know um, 
um, cannot remember how I structure the motif here. Okay, let's say. So this is. Then again, motif. Here starts kind of long motive. That's what I was about to show you in the very first place. So this one. So this is kind of extended motives. And then again by In this motif, we need to find main interval, and the main interval always come around the end of the motif. So basically, I'm intonate everything to the um, descending second here. I was actually trying to find the pattern that I could remain during the whole. Um, song because this is all about you know like verses you know when you make poetry it's the same the same we need to keep try to keep the same um, accents on the same syllables so yeah I just came to the point that this is the pattern small slurs, like one slur, but again I'm not doing them like um, artificially, they are naturally when I actually intonate musical speech and everything I lead to this note, ascending second, and yeah, and the rest is the same, like I said, the same pattern. pretty much you know like um, boring but this is the core of this music so um, if I play it by motifs is there any difference here oh okay I'm gonna also talk about motif in the very last page because the pattern is different here so in this motif I emphasize the first syllable you know I'm going to before I would go, you know, like this, but I'm changing and I'm not, I'm shopping is changing. So now the first note is more important. And the rest is here. So. And now here I continue the same pattern. I bring everything to the first beat of the bar.
a student playing, you know, <laughs> in music school. But it's okay because we are playing by motives right now. Now we're gonna talk about phrases. The phrase consists as usually of two motives. And um, again, I was trying to um, change the same pattern, um, you know, like in one phrase, second motive is more important. That's what I think. So I'm gonna play by phrases and I'm gonna emphasize second motive in it. Okay, so this is how it goes. First motive, less important. Second motive, So in this pattern, this is how we build phrases. Now in this section, let's say this is section A, in B section, we're gonna use <coughs> different pattern. In one phrase, we're gonna emphasize the first motive. So the first motive is more important. and B section and even in C section the same so if again we do it's gonna sound so first phrase less important now second phrase more important so this is 
I'll send those. And next one again. <laughs> show you this maximum itself. Um, you can play a little bit faster, maybe it's easier for you to feel it, so I'm just playing by samples right now. we're gonna play with emotional image such a beautiful stage when I analyze this nocturne I um, I was absolutely you know it was like a spell for me <laughs> I was like out of this world because you know the whole point of emotional image that you feel it through intonation between notes when you play it very very slow and it changes absolutely everything it gives you some kind of vibration that um, through which you can feel really the uh, what this music is about, you know? So if, again, I already know the harmonies of this song, so I basically have an idea what this music is about, so I have the character of this music, and I just go into this, and I just start playing it with uh, intonation, musical speech, phrasing, with all these sound texture qualities, but <clears throat> the main thing that I'm trying to feel in every single interval um, how I express this emotional image through, through my intonation. So let's go ahead and see how it goes. it is to play this etude using this system really <laughs> so much enjoyable um, so yeah this is how you actually bring the uh, the real breast of music and um, yeah so going to next stage now in this stage we making a form 
uh, we need to figure out where we're gonna make the beginning of our story, development, um, I even make some intensification here and then rising to climax, climax and maybe there is even another climax. So uh, in my opinion, in my interpretation, this nocturne consists of two parts and each part has its own combination. So the first four bars is basically beginning. Next one is uh, be development. Then after this, going kind of intensification. From here, we're going gradually to rising to climax. So we are in the section rising to climax. And then here we are, we are in our climax uh, part, our first climax. Here I'm starting a new part and basically I'm making beginning again. And this will let me play the same absolutely music differently, you know. Uh, I'm not playing it the same and this is the most important thing. Um, so my next tune is not boring. <laughs> it's quite interesting to listen to. Just because I'm following the the plan of my form, you know, the form of music. So this is again beginning. And now in the C section, this one comes to rising to climax. Even here, it's still brings us to combination, to climax that comes here. And after this, starting from here, I'm making conclusion. So in this case, when I start playing Next year, I'm not giving every of my passion to the very first, you know, playing something like this. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but it's still, you know, many students play, you know. level of energy during the whole nocturne and it's just so incredibly difficult to listen to such to such performance so please distribute energy of um, of the piece especially such a delicate feel like nocturne and make beginning as a beginning so you intonate it with this kind of feeling you know and then you make development it's in you already can feel you intonated differently then intensification and then when it comes to rising to climax you don't intonate it again like beginning otherwise it would be you know like you are you know, you're accumulating the energy and then just again down. So no, you still continue, you're rising to the climax. So. And you bring it to here. This is your combination where you can just, you know, open up and relax a little bit. beginning and enjoy this 
last um, section because it's not gonna repeat itself anymore. So this is the very last movement. So just relax and enjoy every turn of music. And from here, we're starting again um, preparing for our culmination. So this is rising to climax. So you sing a and then it brings the culmination. And this is again when you can bring a little bit more passion. Again, I don't really like to play this nocturne, you know, with all my, you know, like, like, um, earth passion. I think this is more like, like I said, E flat major is like another world. So for me, this nocturne is like a dream and I'm like a fairy here, which is, you probably already know just. So it's like a love in the fairy kingdom, you know, in the fairy tale. <laughs> so that's why even if it's culmination, I still don't play it with like uh, super passion. I still just, I'm still in the character. It's culmination in the character of music. So it's not too, uh, don't give too much pressure over there. Um, yeah, so this is how you can avoid, another way, how you can avoid to um, play it and feel boring and um, and audience feel boring while listening. So like again, again this melody, again this melody. So this is the way how you can make it every time be um, the song and play a little bit differently. So on the stage where we now organize every our imagination, every our intonation in the time limits such important stage. Um, I'm gonna post it every how to say <laughs> every dotted crotchet here, every dotted quarter. So basically four pulsation in the bar. Ta -da. pulsation constantly and that let me um, come back to the original tempo even after my rubatos when I'm making a lot because well it's shopping you can make a lot of rubato um, so I'm gonna w explain what I'm doing I'm tuned you know into the image of music and I merge it with um, sense of form, you know, and then I feel it all together in the pulsation. I give, you know, time, I give um, space to music now. So I organize everything in time. And the funny thing that um, I think that if you play this Nocturne, I, I think the time is critical here, okay? To, to, to choose the right tempo is absolutely critical. If you play this Nocturne, a little bit faster than it's supposed to be, then this beautiful feeling and atmosphere will be lost, even if you make everything correctly. Um, like I said, it's all about left hand, and I actually prefer to play it quite slow, quite relaxed, like this. I'm not like coming to, I'm not bowing, bowing to every single, you know, every single beat. I'm still following the phrasing. In this case, I can allow myself to play quite slow. Now, I'm gonna show you how, if, what will happen if I play a little bit faster. some 
some kind of hurry and rush to, to, to the music like I cannot really breathe you know so I really choose uh, in my interpretation I really choose quite slow tempo to, uh, besides there are so many detail details in the melody that you really want to take your time to sing and to feel it and to convey it through music so yeah I think this slow tempo is kind of fair here <laughs> Uh, of course, don't avoid this stretto. Again, don't make it too faster. Don't accelerate too faster. Um, just, you know, again, within the character of the music. Um, so this step is very important because if you don't feel any pulsation, then, well, the music will just simply fall apart when you play it. And you cannot, you know, gather together everything. <laughs> So time and tempo stage is so much important in this particular nocturne. And again, the last stage, you know, I was actually, when I was analyzing this nocturne, I was like, okay, if I'm going to use this artistry feeling, which we know what it's about, right? Um, like this confident expression, um, will it really change the character of music, you know, in the bad way. Um, and I decided to try, because I really didn't want this artistry would destroy this fragile feeling that I have about this nocturne, but actually when I tried, it turned out to be even better. Again, like I said, when you play with this artistry expression, then you kind of, again, you stop moving all around, you know, um, you hold yourself inside, you hold your audience, um, so it's still very important and it didn't destroy the character of music, this is the most important thing, so I'm going to show how it sounds with artistry. Actually, you know what, I'm going to play the first phrase without artistry and then with artistry and maybe you can see the difference. So first, without artistry, just emotional image, form and time. to keep um, everything together and to really follow the music, really follow the full phrasing, follow the form of the music, keep in mind, in mind where you are. When I'm playing without artistry, then, you know, I tend to bring everything again, you know, to, to now moment, which Again, I'm kind of splashing out the energy around. And also, if you could see, when I played with artistry, my torso was more stable. I didn't move too much. Again, I didn't do this, you know, on purpose to show you. It was, it came from inside out to me. Uh, came from inside. <laughs> so, this is like the final product. <laughs> mm, I'm always aware about sound texture. I'm always aware about my movements of my hands. I always know how I intonate with musical speech. I always know where I am 
in the phrasing, where I am in the form of music. I always feel spostation while playing and I can manage to play around with this. I mean, going to Rubat and then come back. And I can manage to play it with artistry, which will give me uh, confidence while I'm playing on stage, so I won't be lost uh, in the, my audience thoughts and energy while they're listening to me. Um, yeah, and at the same time, I could reach, you know, like Antabili and Gata and delicate tone, singing tone, uh, so all bunch of things that we always want to uh, to achieve while playing Nocturne. And the most important thing is such a pleasure to play it using piano system. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching and I see you in my next video. Please let me know how it goes and um, I'm opening my Skype lessons so you're welcome to join them. <laughs> Alright, thank you very much. Bye bye.